Okay, wait. Okay, you're on, but I'm trying oh, to like rotate it. And people are watching, so just talk. Hi! People watching? Uh, you can't turn your phone while recording, but it was turned. It already. was turned. Okay. okay, who cares? Let's just do it this Hi, way. Hi, folks. Kim has a robot hand that is holding her phone, and that's how this is happening right now. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Stacy. I'm the curatorial assistant here at the Center for Sacramento History, and I have a really cool job. Um, I help with exhibits. I process artifacts in the collection. I paint little numbers on things. I do research. I make labels. And uh, yeah, I love my job and do a lot of really cool random stuff. And one really cool random thing I did this past month was take a deep dive into a celebration that happened in 1922. Our, what is it, theme. Our theme this, week, this whole month for Archives Crawl was celebrations. And so the celebration we chose was Days of 49. And so we spent a month digging through our collections, looking for things about Days of 49, and uh, thought we'd just show them to you today. So come on over here. Dylan says, get it together. Dylan. <laughs> also, if you have questions, ask, and I'll ask Stacy as we go. All right, so Days of 49, like I said, happened in 1922. What was the motivation for all of this, throwing this giant party? Money. It was all about money. People wanted to bring, the, the Chamber of Commerce wanted to bring money to Sacramento. We were an up and coming modern capital city. We had, we're working on a water treatment plant, you guys. Clean water, clear water, hey. We are um, moving up in the world. There was a building boom. Skyscrapers were going up, I mean, for 1922 and it was a big deal we wanted people to know about it we wanted people to come to town and spend money in town so the Chamber of Commerce and here are the records part of the records from the Chamber of Commerce we have that collection so how cool is that you guys I was able to go through this is just the minute book from the Chamber of, uh, Chamber of Commerce meeting in 1922 and find oh look there's where they start talking about the Days of 49 celebration. Secretary Manager Arthur Service Dudley uh, was involved and came up with the idea. And they had initially thought, oh, we don't really know, May or June 1922. They started planning uh, August of 1921. So here we go, we have a poster. Celebrate Days of 49. This is an original poster, guys. Sacramento, California, May 23rd to 28, 1922. One thing um, that we should probably tell you is, well, Kim, is there, a, is there a box or a folder labeled Days of 49? No, Stacey, there's not. That's not how archives are organized. It's not? Mm -mm. Well, dang. Mm -hmm. So it's really a hunt, guys. There is no file folder. There's no aisle labeled Days of 49. You have to go through multiple collections to just kind of to find little bits and piece it all together. That's what research is all about. Yeah, so nothing that you see here came from the same place. This is from the Chamber of Commerce collection. This is from another collection entirely. These banners are from two different collections. It's bananas, you guys. That's why it takes eons to, to put an exhibit together and to, to research things. And people who've written books know this. Anywho, so where was the main stage for Days of 49? Where was it? Well, it was Southern Pacific graciously gave the Chamber of Commerce a little piece of, little piece of property that had recently in. Now it used to be Sutter's Lake or China Slough. It was a, a piece of property just next to the old passenger station. Here's what it used to look like. See that big body of water right there? Yeah, that was gone by about 1919. And 
and a whole population was displaced. And we do a lot of crazy things in the name of redevelopment, and that's a whole other talk. So we're not going to talk a, t a lot about that right now. But by 1919, it was all filled in. They called it the sand lot. So here we go. No more lake. Sand lot, Southern Pacific. Here's the passenger station from that picture that I just showed you. Right. Now today, what's there today? This passenger station is long gone. Today, what we know as the, pass the, the Amtrak passenger station, um, that's where that is today, right here. Right? OK, so anybody have any questions? No. Cool. OK. Here is a panorama of the days of 49. Now, this main stage was called the Mining Town. Here it is. We'll talk a little bit more about what was in the Mining Town in a minute. But we're looking at two city blocks of themed insanity. So here are a few more things we dug up from the collection. Here's a publicity brochure that was sent around the country try to encourage people to come. A celebration without parallel, bizarre, spectacular, inspiring. And as you can see, we have two of them. Here's one. We That's have a all. Question. Oh yes, what's the question? Dylan McDonald would like to know: Is Dylan. there an exhibit in the works for this root and toot and good time? I love that you called it a root and toot and good time. And at this point, no, there is not disagrees. an exhibit in the works. I think that there should be. Um, we should have a reading room exhibit on this personally. So. I I agree. There you go. That that would be cool. One day. One day. Yes. Thanks for your question, Dylan. Um, so, uh, where was I? Here's an example of a cartoon that was put in the B to encourage people to come. Here's Days of 49. The whole state, guys. Look, the whole state is a coming. The state is Come exciting. on. Everybody get aboard. Um, Dylan has another question. Yes. He would like to know, why is everything in plastic? Why is everything in plastic? Good well, question, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is in plastic because really it keeps it flat. Mm -hmm. Keeps it flat, keeps it protected. Mm -hmm. So it's a preservation thing. It's a preservation thing. Yeah, it's called a encapsulation. And the plastic isn't bad for the paper? Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. You have to use the right kind. Sure, of course. Thanks for the question. These um, are felt and I did not take them out of the encapsulation because old felt makes me nervous. It's pretty fragile, guys. So what was it about the theme that, that was supposed to attract people? Um, they were really pushing the romance, the romance of the days of 49. They, they wanted to say it was, oh, just a, a lovely romantic time of, of people coming to California to find their fortune and seek gold. And we know that wasn't the case. A period of disease and, and ugh just muddy streets and it, it, it was it was nuts but they, they weren't going for a historical accuracy for this event yes i have a question why did they do this on the 73rd anniversary as opposed to the 70th or 70 75th that was a really good question yep. and they did they did this again in the 30s and the 40s but it was not to this scale as far as why now I really don't know. I really don't know. I know that it was a, a time of amazing increased development in, in the city. I know that we wanted money, we wanted to get the word out, but as far as why not wait, um, I don't know. I don't know, and they, they did it again, but definitely, like I said, not to this scale. Some similar events happened in the 30s and the 40s. And our most recent incarnation of Days of 49 um, happens in Old Sac, or it used to before pandemic days. So um, yeah, anyway, moving on. Part of Days of 49 was dressing the part, and the Chamber of Commerce really encouraged folks to make their own costumes. There was a costume contest. They put out this poster with recommendations. <laughs> Anybody who 
dresses in period attire recoils at this in horror. I'm sorry. They weren't going for historical accuracy, guys. It was cheesy. It was corny. It was mostly, mostly good. But let me tell you a bad part, all right? A James bad. Scott, I see your question. Ooh, we're getting there. We're getting there? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, all this costume stuff, there, there was a bad part of it, you guys. Now, we can identify, okay. I'm just gonna tell you, it's, it's red face. Red face is a problem. It's a, it, was, it was a problem then, it's a problem now. What is red face? Red face is when people of non-Native American ancestry perpetuate stereotypes by dressing in stereotypical, inauthentic costume. We see this today in sports mascots. We see it in Halloween. Y'all, it's a culture, not a costume. And it's offensive. Don't do that. Here we have a photo of people that are not indigenous. These are not Native American folks. This was a group of men called the Improved Order of Red Men. And they took it upon themselves to dress in costume and pretend to be Native Americans. They marched in parades. So this is a real bad idea, guys. We don't condone anything like this. Now, folks of Native American ancestry were there. They were there. The Chamber of Commerce called up the Washoe tribe in, out of Carson City, and they invited them to come on down and camp, and they did. I cannot see any mention of them being involved in any of the planning. Um, and you get the impression that they were treated more as scenery than active participants. And that's terrible. Terrible. So just putting that, putting that out there. Yes. Uh, I just have a comment from Don Benning. Hi, Don. Um, Five-star volunteer. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> his father grew a beard for Days of 49. I'm going to talk about the beards, Don. I'm oh, going to yeah, talk we're about the there. beards. We're getting there. I miss you, by the way. Anyway, Hi. Don, if you have a picture of that, we'll need to know. <gasps> yes, it. we'll need to know. Okay, so what else do we have in our collection from Days of 49? We have this really neat banner here, or sash. It's not in the best shape. It's ripped at the end there, but that is an original artifact from 1922. Here we have a picture of employees of the D.O. Mills Bank. Now, big companies really encourage their uh, employees to participate in Days of 49. Now, the biggest company in town was the railroad, of course. They had 3,000 people worked for the railroad and they really pushed participation in Days of 49, so much so that they had their own contingent of Whiskerinos. And hold that thought, I'm gonna talk about Whiskerinos. Anyway, these bonnets are um, from 1922. These were part of somebody's costume. I really tried to mount these on head forms so they look like, you know, a head sitting here wearing the bonnet. But this blue one is enormous. It's huge. It ate the head form. So I just, like, you know, <laughs> laid them down. So here we have an official souvenir, um, official souvenir sheet music. There was a contest to come up with the official song for Days of 49. And these folks won. And uh, here's the music. And we have a special surprise coming up later today. So once we're done here, keep looking, checking back in on our Facebook page. And we have a little pleasant little surprise for you guys. A little musical treat. Here is an official program for Days of 49, and this is an artifact from 1922, guys. So what, what went on in town other than the, the mining camp scene? Well, things were happening all over town. There was a parade every single day. There was a rodeo at the fairgrounds, which at this point were all stock on Stockton Boulevard. There were aerial flyovers. There were fireworks every night. There was a, a little train ride that you could take. Now, the 
a historic engine was in town, the CP Huntington Number no. 1. Now, train folks, don't get mad at me for using the wrong terminology. I'm so sorry, train folks. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize in advance. But uh, this was a historic engine because it was one of the first transcontinental engines. I think. Don't get mad. But it's on exhibit right now. It's been beautifully restored. When the Railroad Museum opens up again, you guys, go down and see it. It's really, really pretty, super cute, smaller than you'd think, just great. Anywho, here it is, CP Huntington number one. There were little excursion train trips, and you could hop on the CP Huntington and take a little trip around town. And we have in our collection an actual ticket, special excursion ticket, engine CP Huntington number one excursions. Days of 49 celebration. How cool is that, you guys? Stacy, shouldn't you be wearing gloves? Oh, hey! That is a good question. <laughs> For paper stuff, um, it's really recommended that you don't use gloves hmm. because you have less dexterity when you're wearing gloves. You just might make tear something or you smear can't something. feel it. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's really just recommended that you use clean hands. Clean hands. Now, if I was, like, touching the bonnets, I'd want to wear gloves. Okay, ooh, what celebrities were present at the Days of 49? Oh, man, you guys, Tom Mix was here. Tom Mix. Tom Mix, celebrity cowboy movie star. We have the original first engineer of the CP Huntington number one. He came down for the event. Did he drive the train? He did, indeed. Oh, man. <laughs> Captain Lowell Yarex, he was a famous pilot. He did flyovers over the mining camp. Captain A.H. Hardy, who apparently was a champion marksman and spokesperson for Peter's Cartridge Company. Ooh. He did some fancy shooting exhibitions. Mm -hmm. So fun, fun times. So what else was at the mining camp? Let me show you. Here's what you'd see, and guys, we just found this picture, so I'm sorry that it wasn't scanned and up this week for you to see, but we can post it again later. Here's the entrance to the mining camp. And, you know, what, what kind of buildings were there? Well, gosh, there was a dance hall, there were cabins, there was a saloon. Now, guys, remember, this is Prohibition, so they weren't serving real alcohol at this party. There was a phony saloon. There were county exhibits. Neighboring counties were invited to build buildings at the mining camp and participate uh, for award. And there was a, an award contest. Uh, there was a there there was gambling, phony gambling using scrip. Um, the saloons and the gambling were in an area of the mining camp run by the Lions Club called Slippery Gulch. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> What was the biggest part of the mining camp? Well, that was a mountain. Guys, they constructed a mountain out of, out of wood, <laughs> and they called it Mount Sacramento. Uh, what was in the mountain? Well, there, were, there was a restroom facility in the mountain. There was a, a Chamber of Commerce office, and the, the main ticket office was in the mountain. Um, you could get to the top of the mountain by riding a, a burrow. So, so here we have they wind, you'd be, sit on top of your little burrow, you'd wind to the top of the mountain, and there was a viewing platform at the top. And you could actually see, I call it Donkey Mountain, I know, I'm sorry, that's, it's not correct, but anyway, you could see Donkey Mountain right there, there it is. And it doesn't end there, guys, there was a waterfall coming down off Donkey Mountain that powered a mill Did anything uh, interesting happen on top of uh, Donkey Mountain? Yes, as a matter of fact, something really interesting happened on top of Donkey Mountain. The Chamber of Commerce um, put an ad in the newspaper and asked if any engaged couples would be interested in getting married at the mining camp, having a public wedding, bring more people into the mining camp. So a, a local couple, um, young, very young couple, uh, decided, um, took them up on their offer. They were really swayed by the, the presents that they were promised. 
<laughs> if you said that you were going to get married at the mining camp, you were offered um, some insurance, a free honeymoon in San Francisco, um, some furniture, some groceries, and a genuine electric lamp. So, yes, very important. And so this young couple took them up on their offer. Hey, we're getting married anyway, let's go. So <laughs> what were their names? Oh gosh, Beatrice, Beatrice Montgomery and TJ Cox. So B and TJ rode burrows to the top of Mount Sacramento, wearing full cheesy Days of 49 attire. Their wedding party followed them also on burrows. <laughs> The wedding march was played by the Oakland Firemen's Band. They looked down at an audience of 10,000 people and they said their vows on the top of this phony mountain at Days of 49. And everybody cheered, the whole mining camp cheered. And they got their free trip to San Francisco. So, good deal. And their lamp. And their lamp. Very important. So what else was happening in town? Oh my gosh. So. Businesses along K Street, I don't have a picture of those out right now, but go back on our Facebook page uh, previous days and look for those pictures. Businesses on K Street put up these facades, really cheesy facades, like a, an eyeglass repair shop said, get your specs fixed. Like just the cheesiest signage to all go along with the theme. Um, what else? There was a rodeo at the fairgrounds. Um, one of the stars at the rodeo was a world champion, world champion bucking cow named Milkshake. <laughs> um, Tom Mix made an appearance at the rodeo. He uh, rode a, participated in a chariot race and drove a really fast car around the track because, you know, you got to keep with the 49er theme, right? Anywho. So, what else do we have here? Oh, parades. Okay, so there were contests for everything. There was a contest for the best float. Um, here we have Bruners, their entry into the float contest. I believe they won third place. I don't know what that is, guys. We suspect it's like a shoot of some kind. There's like shiny things at the bottom. Maybe that's gold. We're taking suggestions. We're taking, yeah. I don't think it's a horn of plenty. Maybe it's a horn of plenty. I don't know. Some kind of hydraulic mining doodad, perhaps? I don't know. Giant sluice. A, 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 yeah, a sluice. Flume. Sure. Can you slide through it? We don't know. Oh, people liked it. Third place, I think. Bruners, good job. So, 200,000 people from around the country showed up to this thing. The police force got a little nervous. They needed some additional, an additional officers to help with crowd control and traffic. So, ooh, guys, so here's another collection we had to pull from to get more information about Days of 49. The, this folder is from the um, City of Sacramento City Council minute records. So we're able to look at the City Council records and see what they were meeting about in 1922. Oh look, oh my goodness, what were they meeting about? Well, the chief of police, Barney McShane, there's his actual signature, you guys, he wanted some, uh, uh, some more police officers. So he, uh, they put out the call for uh, officers, over 150 applied, and they really wanted to hire uh, guys with a military background. And so out of that over 100 applicants, he, went through and picked 70 or so, 76, he picked 76, did a little research on these 76 guys, found that they had no connection to the KKK, very important. Um, side note here, at the time, the, oh gosh, the city manager, our first city manager, Clyde Seavey, was staunchly anti-KKK. And a few weeks back, look at our Facebook, we did a little post on Clyde CV. Um, kind of a historical dreamboat, guys. Um, he put a list of city workers, city employees in the, the newspaper, and all of these folks, he, he really pushed for them to be fired. 
because they had a connection to the KKK. So um, go back and read the post. It's a good one. We like Clyde Seavey, anti-KKK. Barney McShane was on that team too. He didn't want anybody associated with the KKK on his force. And he definitely didn't want to hire any new guys that were associated with the KKK for this event. So these 76 gentlemen were um, all with military backgrounds. They were given badges and then told to wear their military uniform. So here we have a letter from Barney McShane recommending a specific, here, here's a list of guys, this, recommending these guys to work the event. And it was just a, a week long job, guys, just, just for a week. They were paid to be special police. Now, the, the, there was a problem, though. On day two of the event, <laughs> I found in the newspaper that one of these special police officers, William D. Tyler. Uh, William. I know, William. He, um, he was arrested for being drunk on the job. But it was prohibition. It, I know, it was prohibition. <laughs> <laughs> so Mr. Tyler, he, uh, he was arrested at 4th and K. His star was taken away. Mm. They brought him in. He was wandering about in an intoxicated condition and uttering threats against the government. Oh my. I know. He was, he was put in jail. So, mm. For the most part, the the, they weren't volunteer. For the most part, the special police officers seemed to work out okay, except for that one guy. Anywho, so my favorite part of Days of 49, my favorite part, was a whisker contest, a beard contest, a facial hair contest. Now, they thought, okay, well, we have all these great events happening. There's parades, there's a rodeo, there's a mining camp. It's just gonna be great fun. We need more. We need more. We need something that'll make national news, something that's so weird. It'll bring people and garner attention from, from all over the country. So they came up with a, a facial hair contest and it really started, well, you know, it started the summer before getting publicity out. But here we have in the newspaper, this is a bound volume of the Sacramento Bee. Now guys, if you want to see, if you want to read old issues of the Sacramento Bee, all you need is a library card, guys. All you need is a Sacramento Public Library card. You can read this, okay? But here we have a paper print bound volume. This is Sacramento Bee, Friday evening, March 17th. This is St. Patrick's Day. Here we have some city officials getting publicly shaved outside the old post office, the pink post office. This was so they could participate in the facial hair growing contest and the person who had the longest facial hair that was, if he was certified clean shaven on St. Patrick's Day, he could participate and, and in the contest in May when the event happened, if he had the longest facial hair, he would win. $49, $49. So they were all clean shaven by their barbers and the barbers had to sign off. So in addition to the beard growing contest, they also put out the call nationwide for the longest beard. And <laughs> two gentlemen traveled to the event. Here they are. These are our contest winners, guys. Now. We just found this photo this past week. Just found it this past week. Now our two contest winners, this shorter guy here, he was declared crown prince of the Whiskerinos. And his name was Zach Wilcox. He was from Carson City, so he didn't have to come that far. Zach was a quirky guy. Zach was that guy in town who would ride his bike around town um, with a parrot on his shoulder. He was that guy. Um, and Zach's, Zach's special for, for all those reasons, but he's also special because before his death and his will, he left his glorious beard to the Whiskerinos. <laughs> um, it's said that he had never shaved in his life, and um, he wanted his beard to, to, to go to the Whiskerinos, to come back to Sacramento. So a few years after all of this, when he actually passed away, um, that's what happened. And the coroner 
shaved off his beard per his wishes and um, some Whiskerinos went to Carson City and picked it up and brought it back and there was a parade and this has not a lot to do with Days of 49 but it's a fun story. Um, there was a parade and it ended up at Sutter's Fort because the curator of the museum at Sutter's Fort was a Whiskerino and he put it in a glass case and that's all I know. Hey Sutter's Fort, State Parks, do you have a beard in a box somewhere? It's possible. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, this other guy, this tall guy, his name was Hans. Hans Langseth. And Hans was from North Dakota. He was a circus performer. So he was a, he was a showman and he showed off his beard. Came on down to Sacramento. He was declared king of the Whiskerinos. Hans was. Other fun artifacts we have. We have this little pin. Look at that. Sacramento Whisker Club. I just want to tell you that a member of the Minor Flats <coughs> has just joined us. <gasps> well, hello, <laughs> member of the Minor Flats. <laughs> We're going to see them later for a um, fun musical treat, guys. So here we have, and again, this is one of the photos we just found this week. This is a photograph of a meeting of the Whiskerinos. Now, notice the lack of facial hair, so I'm thinking mm. this is a early on. Now, do these banners hanging from the ceiling look familiar? Wait a minute. Yes. Wait, wait a minute. Wait. Hmm. What? what? It's the ones that we oh have. Oh my goodness. Cool. And this was not donated by the same person who donated that fo photo. Man, archives are cool. Man, it's cool. So I love their little hats. We see city manager Clyde Seavey. I'm showing the um, Ooh. eye patch guy. Oh, Kim's favorite. And then these two guys are my other favorite. Just pals. You know, hey now. There's oh, Buddy okay. Clyde Seavey. It's kind of being weird. Uh oh. Ah. Standing next to Clyde is Harry Diggles. Oh, Harry. Harry Harry Diggles was the chairman of the event. He was the head honcho in charge of Days of 49. Now under here, we have a little pamphlet issued by the Chamber of Commerce. After the event was over, it was just a kind of a backpat congratulatory to us document saying the publicity was worth millions and they got tons of press and aren't we so great? What a great event to have. So we found that again not this donation was not related to anything else that you see here just a bunch of random stuff over here we have some stationery from the whiskers club of camp 49. now did the whiskers club did the whiskerinos continue their activities after days of 49 yeah yeah they did this stationery is from after the event clyde cb had left um, by the time the stationery was used, and the new chief, chief Whiskerino was a judge named E.C. Hart. And is there a Whiskerino's collection? There is a Whiskerino's collection, but we don't, we don't have it. Who has it? The Sacramento Room. All right, go I know. Sacramento Room. I'm jealous of the I Sacramento Room. I know. Okay, so what else is going on here? Here's a fun cartoon. This was printed in the newspaper. When was this in the newspaper? May 27th, 1922. Here we have the grand review of the Whiskerinos. We'll tell the world with whiskers. Remember the whiskers and whiskers we trust. It, this little funny idea for a whiskers club and a whisker growing contest took on a mind of its own, guys. It was enormous. So much so that the, the Whiskerinos sent honorary membership cards to bearded members of Congress and the King of England. <laughs> what else is in the newspaper about the Whiskerinos? Well, this is going to take a minute, sorry. Got to be careful. Do, 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 do. Keep going. Stay with me here. Love your careful turning of these pages. Thanks, Kim. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my gosh. 20 pages at a time, right? Okay, okay. 
La, 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 la. All right, here we have fast forward to April 1922. There's Clyde Seavey. There's Zach Wilcox. Whose whiskers will win? Beard growers to report on house crops. <laughs> I love all the way, different ways that uh, the Zach B um, talked about whiskers. So um, I loved it so much that I, I wrote down all the ways that the Zach B talked about whiskers, and I have a list. Great. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Luxuriant chin adornment. Facial crop, <coughs> hairy triumph, <laughs> um, her suit adornments, her suit. Um, the grossest one, cootie garage. The sack bee actually printed the words cootie garage. Mm -hmm. um, and then they described faces aglow with the pride of beards. So. Oh, the guy who won the um, growth contest, uh, his name was C.C. Bennett, and he, in what, two months, grew one inch, and um, one inch, yeah, a little over one inch I don't know if that's of beard good growth. or not. I know, I like, don't know. As a not having a beard, I'm not sure. We don't have a reference for that, guys, mm -hmm. we, we don't know. Okay, so. This is one of, one of the coolest things that's on the table right now. Now, Kim, what can you tell us about this? <laughs> okay, well, this is a poster um, from the police department that I discovered a couple years ago while processing oh, the police department's collection. And um, I, I didn't know about Days of 49, so I had no context of what the heck this was. All I knew was that there are all these cops <laughs> looking kind of weird. <laughs> Like, here's Clyde Seavey, the city manager. But they're all, like, kind of dressed like cowboys. Here's the chief of police. There's the chief of police. Barney McShane. You know, they all look a little... There's um, Max Fisher, who we love. He is um, he is responsible for most of our mug books that we have. Um, yeah, so they're all, like, kind of dressed, like, old school. It says Days of 49, but I was quite sure it was not from 49. And then, you know, of course, it has the date down there, 1922. Right. So, um, so I was just really, really confused about it. Um, and then I put it away and didn't <laughs> look any further into it until like a couple months ago when Stacy became really obsessed with this. I don't know what you're talking about. And she started talking about Whiskerinos and Days of 49. I was like, wait a minute, this sounds so familiar. And then I remembered this poster and went and found it for her. And it also features James Marshall because, of course. So, what did police officers actually look like at this time? Like, you could see the same hat in a few of the pictures here. This was just a costume hat, you know, probably sitting in a basket next to the chair where you took your picture. So, here's what they actually we went through, and Kim has processed this uh, Sacramento Police Department collection, so it was really easy to mm -hmm. find these pictures. <laughs> here we have, and all these guys are identified. We know who every one of them is. Um, here is a picture of Sergeant Maley, George yeah. Maley. Oh, here's what he actually looked like in 1924. Looks professional. Looks professional, all right. Here we have what Sergeant Maley looked like for Days of 49. <laughs> we have another fun example. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. One of my favorites, favorite goofy, goofy guys on this chart. Someone said one chart. of them looks like Bill Berg. Oh my God, it's this one, isn't it? He looks a little bit like Bill the Berg. The chief? Yeah. Bill Berg, you look like the chief? Like a little bit. Now, okay, here's another officer, Mike Canotti. Here's Mike. Kind of a dreamboat. There's Mike right there. And then what was Mike's facial expression? Oh, Mike, what happened? Oh, Mike. <laughs> Hey, sorry, technical Hi. difficulties. Sorry, we're guys, we're back. Um, I just wanted to say thanks. And thanks for everybody who's watching and supporting the Center for Sacramento History and Archives Crawl. And everybody, go to our Facebook page. Go to the Archives Crawl Facebook page. We have tons of local institutions posting amazing things. You can get the inside scoop at lots of places that you can't visit right now because of the pandemic. So um, yeah, check everybody out. Thanks so much for commenting. 
And yeah, that's it. Thanks. Oh, um, Kim, let me show you really oh. for a second. So, bye, Kim. Bye. Nice mustache. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> bye, guys.